in sports, determined professional players train and pain their bodies, forsaking the comfort of life to gain athletic powers. The grace of athletes never ceases to amaze onlookers as the control of machines, terrain, and bodies exude countless hours of practice and dedication to their craft, but sports is also home to plethora of dangers. They strive for goals that many people could not dream of. Sadly, calamity strikes at the hardest in triumph moments. These athletes died while paying for the sports they loved. In today's episode, we've brought you some professional players who unfortunately died while playing. Let's have a look at them. Ayrton Senna Brazilian Formula One driver Ayrton Senna was by all accounts the master of his domain when it came to racing, a winner of three championships. Senna dominated the sport for a long period of 10 years. Before meeting a tragic end in 1994 at the San Marino Grand Prix in Italy. As he led the pack into the seventh lap, Senna's vehicle went off the track, striking a concrete barrier at a speed of 135 miles per hour. Senna was rushed to hospital with the help of an airlift, but was pronounced dead not long after due to severe injuries. He is, to this day, considered one of the greatest racers of all time. Flo Heyman Volleyball fans worshipped Flo Heyman. Imposingly tall and strong, she would have thrived on any team. Her impact on American volleyball made her an icon. Before she came along in 1974, the U.S. women's team was in tatters. They tanked at the 1964 and 1968 Olympics and didn't even qualify in 1972. With Hyman's help, the U.S. took fifth place in the 1978 World Championship and seemed like moving for gold in the 1980 Olympics in Moscow. In January 1986, Hyman was 31 and still going strong. She joined the Japanese team in an elite league and dominated. But during a game in Tokyo, she summed out, sat down, and slid silently to the floor. Up to that point, she looked and played well. Not a single doctor had spotted a problem throughout her career, but an autopsy revealed that she had Marfan syndrome, a hard-to-diagnose illness that damages the aorta. It turned out that her heart had a dime-sized defect that caused her aorta to rupture. Fran Crippen when asked to comment on the passing of 26-year-old Fran Crippen, it is said that no one knows of a swimmer who was any more popular with fellow athletes. He has a reputation for perseverance. When he fell short of his dream of swimming in the 2008 Olympics, he picked himself up and kept on competing. His persistence paid off countless times in his life. He was an 11-time All-American and two-time ACC Swimmer of the Year for the University of Virginia. But in October 2010, his never-quit attitude may have finished him. At the FINA Open Water 10km World Cup in Dubai, he raced in nearly 90-degree water on a 100-degree day. Multiple swimmers suffered heat exhaustion and had to be hospitalized. Toward the final stretch of the event, Crippen informed his coach he was not feeling well, but he pushed himself to continue. He never reached the end, drowning, probably due to heat exhaustion. Jose Flores When Jose Flores took up horse racing, he was following in his father's footsteps. The son of a Peruvian jockey, Flores watched races as a boy and resolved to win them as a man. After settling in Pennsylvania, he started a stellar run, winning his first title in 1992. Throughout his 30-plus year career, he became one of the most winning jockeys in the state's history, with 4,650 victories and over $64 million in earnings. In March 2018, the 56-year-old Flores was closing in on win number 4,651 
when something horrible happened. He and his horse were leading when the steed suddenly fell. Flores slammed headfirst against the ground. He left behind a wife, their seven-year-old son, and two older sons from an earlier relationship. Vladimir Smirnov During the early 1980s, Soviet fencer Vladimir Smirnov was the best player in the world. In 1980, he earned gold at the Moscow Olympics by breaking a three-way tie in the men's foil. He also earned silver and bronze medals in the team competition. The following year, he pulled off an impressive comeback win at the World Fencing Championship. After seeing his teammates eliminated in the preliminaries, in 1982, he sought to extend his dominance at the Rome World Championships. Instead, his resignation reached a gruesome end. During their fateful match, Bear's blade broke against Smirnov's chest. The blade pierced Smirnov's mask, went into his head, and punctured his brain. He was 29. Chuck Hughes a rising star of the NFL in the early 1970s was in his prime as he had previously set many college records for Texas Western College, including one astonishing feat of 17 interceptions in one game. He was drafted to the Philadelphia Eagles in 1967 and then traded in 1970 to the team he'd end his career with, the Detroit Lions. On October 24, 1971, in a game against the Chicago Bears. Hughes entered in the final minute as an injury replacement for another player. After a few plays, Hughes suddenly dropped to the ground as he made his way to the huddle, clutching his heart and seizing. Despite medics rushing over to help, Hughes died of arteriosclerosis and is the only fatality during an NFL game to date. Ray Chapman a top-notch player in the early years of Major League Baseball, Ray Chapman was a prime bunter for the Cleveland Indians, then known as the Cleveland Naps. But in 1920, during a game with the New York Yankees, pitcher Carl May threw a thunderous spitball that struck Chapman with such force, the audience believed the sound of the crack from his head was that of a baseball bat. Chapman collapsed to the ground. While he was able to stomp off the field, he died just hours later. The spitball was subsequently banned from the sport after the incident. Dale Earnhardt Sr. Dale Earnhardt Sr. was on the final lap of the Daytona 500 when he crashed in 2001. Throughout his career, the 49-year-old husband and father of four children had won 76 races, seven Winston Cup championships, and widespread adoration. Dale Earnhardt Sr. was a man of an extreme friend, foe, and he was a hero lost too soon. In his final race, Dale Earnhardt helped his son Dale Jr. finish in second place. He blocked an advancing vehicle to ensure that Jr. and his teammate Michael Waltrip clinched the top two spots, but the blocked car made contact, causing him to veer into the wall. Then, another car coming out of control with high speed careened into Earnhardt. Dale Jr. witnessed his father's accident in his rearview mirror mere moments before he crossed the finish line. Senior lost consciousness and never woke up again, pronounced dead at the hospital. Reggie Lewis Reggie Lewis, one of the premier players for the Boston Celtics in the late 80s and early 90s, was among the NBA's top players and earners as well. He was earning $3.3 million per season. Tragically, Lewis collapsed and died due to heart failure during training in an off-season game at the age of 27. While rumors of Lewis's cocaine use, the tabloids the medical examiner found no such traces in his autopsy. Lewis's death stunned the NBA as his promise as a basketball player only continued to grow up to that point. Todd Skinner Todd Skinner, an American free climber, was never unaware of the risks in scaling mountains still. While attempting to repeal the Leaning Tower in Yosemite National Park with his friend Jim Hewitt in 2006, Skinner fell 500 feet after his rappel snapped due to wear and tear. 
he would quickly rappel down after his friend finally found his body at the base of the mountain. After a short pause, waiting for help to arrive, Hewitt realized that help would not be coming, left to see park rangers. Skinner died from his injuries upon their return, issuing a warning to climbers to always check that their gear is in top condition. I hope you liked the informational video where we revealed about the professional players who died playing what they love. If this episode was informative to you, then press the like button, and if you want to be updated about our latest videos, then make sure to press that subscribe button as well. Until my next video, stay safe and healthy. Thank you.